hi, this is Sylvia of cpdbox.com. Today I'm going to answer one of your questions about commodity contracts, more specifically accounting for own use commodity contracts under IFRS 9. Today's question comes from Lee from Canada and here it is. Our company produces metal products and we buy lots of raw materials like lead, nickel, copper, iron. We often enter into contracts for future delivery, for example to purchase 10 tons of nickel with delivery in 6 months. The price is usually fixed, but sometimes there's a clause that if we don't actually need the physical delivery, we can opt to pay or receive the difference between agreed price and the current market price of nickel in cash. Also, our CFO was worried about constant movement of raw metal prices and started to hedge them with purchases of commodity forwards. How can we account for this type of the contract? Excellent question. Okay, so normally you should account for similar contracts as for purchases of inventory, that's clear. But Lee, who asked this question, felt there was something different about the contract. Delivery postponed to the future time, net cash settlement possible, fixed prices agreed upfront. That smells like a derivative, isn't it? It meets all three conditions. There is no initial investment. The contract is based on an underlying variable, which is the price of nickel this time, and it will be settled in the future date. And yes, indeed, it is a commodity derivative. It's like a forward contract to purchase nickel. But the question is, should you account for this contract as for derivative? Should you apply IFRS 9? Well, the answer will not surprise you. It depends. IFRS 9 says, more specifically in paragraph 2.5, that you have to apply IFRS 9 for all contracts to buy or sell a non-financial item that can be settled net in cash or in another financial instrument. So yes, this would mean that Lee would have to account for this order of nickel as for derivative because the contract said that the buyer can settle the difference between agreed price and market price in cash. Mm, but it's ugly, because in this case you would have to remeasure the commodity forward to its fair value at each reporting date and book it, right? But luckily IFRS 9 continues. The exception are the contracts that were entered into and continue to be held for the purpose of the receipt of the non-financial item in accordance with the entity's expected purchase, sale or usage requirements. In other words, IFRS 9 does not apply to so-called own use contracts. This is absolutely great because in this case you could simply say that yes we are buying nickel in the future to make our metal products, we are going to take nickel, so now we don't need to book it as a derivative, just a simple order contract when nickel is delivered. The main idea is to produce and therefore the changes in fair value do not affect us. Fair enough. But here you need to be careful about one thing. I stress that in order to apply regular purchase accounting for own use contracts, the contract must be truly for own use, just normal purchase or sale. Well, why am I saying that? Well, it can happen and it normally happens that the contract is not an own use contract despite the fact that it is described as such. So let me list a few examples of such a situation. For example, if there's a possibility of net cash settlement in the contract and the past practice shows that the contracts are often settled in cash and that could indicate that the contracts are not for own use but for making profits on the changes in the market prices. The second example. You would normally enter into offsetting contract with the same counterparty. Well, let's say you have a contract to buy nickel and you enter into the contract to sell nickel with the same entity. Well, that's net settlement too. Or you take the nickel or the delivery of other item and you immediately or within some short time sell it to make profit. So you're not using the commodity for own use but for making profits. So all these circumstances indicate that the contract is not own use contract and therefore you must account for it as for the derivative. How? You can visit my website, the link to the article is below this video in the description and you can find a numerical example with journal entries related to accounting for own use contracts and accounting for a derivative. So you can compare and see the difference yourself.
Now, Lee's question is really excellent because he asks one more thing. Well, and let me read it part again. Also, our CFO was worried about constant movement of raw metal prices and started to hedge them with purchases of commodity forwards. Okay, so you have the price risk here and you want to hedge it. But in this case, you would need to apply hedge accounting criteria and test hedge effectiveness, which is quite a burden. So there's another way. You can decide to designate the own use contract at fair value through profit or loss at initial recognition, not later. Be careful about that. Well, why would you do that? Well, if you hedge similar contracts with derivatives and you don't want to apply hedge accounting, then you would have the accounting mismatch. So the reason is that you would revalue your derivatives via profit or loss, but not the own use contract. So you would see just one sided profit or loss and that's not what you want. Instead, you would designate the own use contract at fair value through profit or loss and you will reach the automatic natural offsetting of profit from own use contracts with loss on hedging instrument, derivative or vice versa. To sum it up, so if you want to hedge the price risk in your own use contracts, you have two options. Number one, you apply the hedge accounting, but in this case, there's an additional administrative burden. And number two, you designate the own use contract at the inception as at fair value through profit or loss and the offset or hedging or hedge accounting as reached naturally. The information in this video is not a substitute from a professional judgment of CPA of your own situation and circumstances and you should consult CPA or other qualified professional. Thank you very much for watching. Please sign up for my channel if you liked it. You can also sign up for our free newsletter on our website, cpdbox.com. There are loads of articles, videos. We offer courses, other resources. Please share this video with your friends and colleagues and stay tuned. Bye.